The first specific nucleophilic addition reaction we'll look at here is hydration. And they call it hydration simply because we're adding water across that carbon oxygen double bond. And as we said earlier, when it's base catalyzed or with a strong nucleophile, and hydroxide here is our strong nucleophile, the first step is going to be nucleophilic attack. So now the OH will be attached, and the other oxygen here is now going to have a negative formal charge. So we form an alkoxide intermediate here. So, and then I'm going to draw out one of these water molecules, because that's where we're going to protonate in step two. So step one here is our nucleophilic attack. Step two here is simply going to be protonation. And I'll draw the lone pairs in since we're about to use some of them, or at least one of them, so for protonation. Cool. That's the whole mechanism. So base catalyzed, nucleophilic attack, followed by protonation. Uh, and we'll see it's a little simpler than the acid catalyzed counterpart we'll see next. So in the acid catalyzed mechanism, we're going to add some, you know, source of H plus, some acid, uh, along with the water. And when they mix, they'll form H3O plus, and that's actually what acts as the acid in step one here. So we said, instead of nucleophilic attack followed by protonation, we'll actually do the protonation first. So, and our protonated here, ketone, is much more electrophilic, a much stronger electrophile than the original ketone. And water, which is a weak nucleophile, while he won't react generally with a, a ketone proper, he will react with a protonated ketone. So he's going to come and do nucleophilic attack here, kick the pi electrons up to the oxygen. And so here this OH is now just simply an alcohol. And then our water molecule, the entire water molecule attaches. So oxygen used to have two bonds in water, now he's got three and a positive formal charge. And this is one other reason why the acid catalyzed mechanism is not as simple. It's not just the reverse two steps, protonation followed by nucleophilic attack. It's often we've got one final step to deprotonate so that we don't end up with a positive formal charge. So oxygen with three bonds here, he's got one too many bonds, and we're going to have another water molecule come in. So that water molecule acts as the base and deprotonate so that we no longer have a positive formal charge. So, and again, this species is called our hydrate. So one thing to note, they're not the most synthetically useful things in the world. We're not gonna, we're not gonna use these in th synthesis process or anything, but it is a nice demonstrative reaction, uh, you know, example of nucleophilic addition. We also can show how aldehydes are much more reactive than ketones. So it turns out the equilibrium constant with a ketone for forming a hydrate is not very favorable. It actually heavily favors the ketone. But for an aldehyde, you actually get like a equal constant of one. You get like 50-50 mixture of the ketone, I'm sorry, of the aldehyde and the hydrate. And then for formaldehyde, it actually has a very favorable equilibrium constant for forming. So again, aldehyde's more reactive than ketones, and the equilibrium constants for hydrate formation demonstrate this.